Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Divine Family. I'm happy to be here today. Clearing up a little bit the energy to hold space for a beautiful encounter. Today I have Majinder joining me to talk a little bit about purpose, about divine, about anything that the universe has for us to develop a beautiful conscious present moment. And that being said, I would love to invite him to join and start this amazing encounter. I cannot find him, but if my gender can ask to join, it will be great. Mom. Yes, but it's not appearing here. Maybe join a request. Hopefully it comes quickly. Here it goes. Welcome, welcome. Okay, I've muted my uh, computer because we're also on the computer and we're on the phone, so I'm slightly confused what's going on. But here we are. That's the most important. Here we are. Welcome, welcome to this beautiful space. For me, it's an honor that you have accepted this invitation. Uh, when I stumbled upon your page. I really resonated with your message. I really resonated with your energy. And the first, uh, the first thing I thought I really would like to connect and talk with this human being about his purpose, about who he is, where the authenticity of his heart comes from. And welcome. Thank you very much, Steph, for having me. Um, more than happy to answer any questions you have or any of the people following have to so yeah, get it started. Let's go. Well, let's talk a little bit about where where do you come from? Uh, how, where, where are your family origins? Uh, where where did your journey in this lifetime started? I'm like, where? How far back do you want to go? Do you want to go back to where the soul was created, or do you want to go back to Earth only? <laughs> oh well, oh well, both interesting. Wherever you want to start, uh, let's dive in. Yeah, okay. So I've always felt that like, I see my past lives um, and I've always felt like I came from the Orion star system and I thought I was maybe an Octorian and, you know, the blue aliens with the long heads, the very spiritually advanced ones. Um, and then last year I did a, a Kashik record um, sort of a session with someone where they see where your soul was created because I wanted to see where my me and my twin flame come from. And it was confirmed we come from the Orion star system, but that we come from a planet called Mintaka, which is a mer people, mermaid, mermen um, sort of planet, and it was destroyed. And that kind of explains like my twin flame it loves water and I'm scared of water. So usually Mintakans have that either fear or love of water and longing for that home. And we are generally just very like optimistic, positive, always see the bright side of life, even when the light of the world is collapsing. And generally just um, just like um, peaceful, loving, connecting with animals and nature sort of people. 
Yes. And then otherwise, I'm born in the UK in this lifetime, but I've had other lifetimes in on Earth. So I had lifetimes in Lemuria, which is where Hawaii uh, and the Pacific Islands are. And then also in ancient Egypt, uh, like most of us, probably Atlantis. But this lifetime, I'm born in England, UK of immigrant parents from India. So my, pe my dad came to England when he was 13. My mom was 16 because my uh, granddad used to work as a police uh, man for the British in Singapore. So we got passports to come to the UK. Yes, there you go. <laughs> amazing, amazing how things just align and then we end up where we belong in this lifetime to evolve. And, and, and tell me about uh, how did you started your journey about recognizing your being, recognizing your soul? How did you dive in into all this uh, questions that happen in, in in the human life and you start saying like where, where do I come from? Yes, yeah, so it's interesting. So I um, last week, not this week actually on Tuesday, um, I've been seeing a shaman regularly and I know you wanted to talk about ancestral stuff and also shamanism and plant medicine. But this week we were working on um, the womb and the mother womb and, and when I was being born. Um, and even when I was in the womb, I felt like the vibrational frequency was off. Like I felt like um, the frequency of my family was perhaps lower than my frequency and there was a lot of fear coming onto onto this planet. Um, I grew up in a lot of violence actually and a lot of uh, turmoil and a lot of pain and separation and ego and all that kind of stuff. So from a very, very young age, I used to be called an old wise man because I was very, very spiritual and connected uh, from a very young age to all the, the gods and the goddesses and mythology and in like we, we are Sikh, but um, I, I class myself as spiritual. But my um, we used to watch a lot of Hindu um, documentaries and movies and uh, Bollywood stuff to do with like the gods and the goddesses. And I was obsessed. Like I knew they existed. I knew they were true. I also was fascinated by anything to do with like superheroes. So I was always connected to that regard. Um, and then I used to pray a lot when I was a very small kid, like even up of like six, seven, eight, I used to pray like I used to do peace prayers three hours a, uh, on a Sunday. Like that's how weird of a wacky kid I was. Um, and I did that because I was surrounded by toxicity and violence and, and fear and I wanted to heal that. And I feel like um, I have a past life um, as a, a, a monk or a nun. So that's all innate in me. But then when I found out I was gay, I stopped becoming religious because I didn't know it was a conflict. Even though the religion in India doesn't actually say anything against it, culturally there was a lot of, a lot of issues. And when I let go of that spiritual faith, I became very depressed, very isolated, very lonely. So it was only at university then I um, rekindled with yoga, meditation and found a spiritual path. So yeah. Amazing. How... Our soul knows what we need to evolve and our human mind sometimes makes something very, very deep out of it. But the important thing is that you actually connect to this authenticity that you're talking about and, and walk through it. So speaking about how you walk through that door, what uh, the, was it like the connection with the yoga and all these things that you were uh, getting involved with that actually helped you through that path? I believe so, because I became very, very depressed when I stopped doing anything spiritual and I started doing um, things that perhaps were in alignment with who I am, like sleeping around, trying different things, substances, even relate with the divine masculines at times. And I made videos about it because they're going through craziness on the twin flame journey. So that's why they're doing all the silly stuff. But we all have done, I don't know. I say we have all done silly stuff. Some divine feminines like, no, I was, um, mother Teresa all my life okay good for you i was not i was not mother Teresa. even though mother Teresa is conspiracies that she wasn't a great person but anyway so i went through a lot of stuff and that stuff took me down dark paths but my light wasn't gonna stay there and then it was actually yoga that saved my life actually because i was very depressed very down i lived in many different countries you know my background's human rights so i lived in places that got me even further down so yoga was, for me was like plugging into the earth. So like I felt when I did yoga um, sutras and asanas, I felt like I was plugging into earth and letting all the negativity and all the toxicity just pour out of my veins. So it did actually save me, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful when we can actually connect to the earth, to this here now, that we actually go through these different emotions because sometimes we actually recognize 
so much we, we we get involved so much with our emotions that we forget who we are because we put the emotions so much in the top that it's so so difficult sometimes for the human mind to comprehend that you can go beyond those emotions yeah and people even numb the emotions you know they use drugs sex um, work um working out other people to be able to avoid those and you see that a lot with the divine masculine in the twin flame journey uh, even the feminines also do that, um, but we basically, um, a lot of society is distorted and disconnected. Um, and then on the other hand, a lot of people are drowning, thinking that that is their truth. The truth is the, the ego, the illusion, the emotions, rather than the truth of the soul, right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Was there a turning point uh, or was it something about, because we've been talking about the twin flame journey and uh, was it like a turning point when you discovered your twin flame journey or uh, was it more about something in your, in your, in your, in your, in your life here in the earth, like something that connected you really deeply with your heart? So it's interesting because we're talking about numbing, right? So before I met my twin flame, I felt like I was, I even told him, I, I'm happy 98% of the time. And I, and I was, I thought I was, but I think I was numbing, avoiding and running away and trying to put a happy sticker on everything, right? Anything happens, put a happy sticker on. It's like, Yee! and it's all that anxiety. It's like people who pretend to be happy, you know that they're covering up something. And he just unlocked all that. So it was like, are you sure? Are you really always happy? Really? <laughs> Look at all these things. But I was very spiritually inclined from a very young age. And then I went through university, got into yoga meditation, and um, it helped me get out of my depression and were really working on myself. And the first thing, I had many chapters in my life. So the first chapter was working on LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender um, individuals. I was helping them. Then I was helping asylum seekers. Then I was doing main spiritual work. And now the next chapter is twin flame stuff. Um, and I'm going to move that on, hopefully, to manifestation, humanitarian and other sort of purpose led initiatives, because that's what we're here for. Did I think I was going to be a twin flame? No. Did I want the twin flame journey? No. But here we do. We have it. So. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, here we are. It's beautiful because I see all the content and how the content that you've been posting has been resonating a lot with people. and. Uh, thank you for everyone that's out right now listening to, to, to this uh, beautiful present moment. Thank you for being here. And um, and for, uh, for me, it's like, like important to, to, to highlight what you've been doing in the past uh, in the past few weeks that I've seen. And um, I do resonate a lot with, uh, with, with the journey. And uh, I've been curious to know on how do you see uh, how do you see the human mind in the twin flame journey and how it affects when it's uh when it when when you're not when you're numbing these emotions when you're not tr connecting mm -hmm. to your heart when you're not connecting to your divine feminine your divine masculine how does it affect you in your in in your journey so yeah thank you about the videos i started doing the videos uh, last july actually um as a way of um trying to get my twin flame back <laughs> because they kept saying everyone kept saying you got to do your life purpose you got to do your life purpose i've not seen anything like it in the akashic records and, and the, the psychic i work with she's like you're going to do this and i was like i don't want to do it and they said like, but that's that's how your divine mask is going to come because my divine mask loves um social media and, and attention and all this and that and apparently he had to see that i could he could have a life in in a div divine way with me doing the same but differently and then so i was hell bent on doing it for that actually i was obsessed with getting the twin flame back and then a part of me also wanted to help people but less so it was more so just for my own interests um and what happens on the twin flame journey is a lot of us are kind of like sleepwalking a lot of humanity is sleepwalking okay and the twin flame's purpose is to to just shatter that and to wake you up to all the shadows, all the traumas, all the karmic past ancestral debris that kind of like covers up your soul and prevents you from shining truly. So uh, when you encounter your twin flame, it is um, a cataclysmic um, experience and you're never going to be the same again. And you don't realize that at the time, but you're never going to be the same again. And you are ascending on speed like it's so fast like the ego deaths are going psh, 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 break 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 more than anything you could imagine and it takes you to ascension absolutely 
Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. In, in, in this moment, after meeting your twin flame, how do you believe that your, that your soul has ascended? In which ways can you re see it reflected in your, in your humanity? Good question. So what happens on the twin flame journey is initially you bump into this person. I do not believe in manifesting your twin flame or going to these uh, companies that charge you thousands of dollars to get your twin flame or whatever. Money making scams and schemes are out there. There's a lot. Um, you, you, you stumble across your twin flame by divine chance because you're meant to at the right time. Okay. And I believe everyone has a twin flame, but I don't believe everyone meets or is incarnated at the same time because they're not ready for it. They're not, or they're not mature enough to be able to deal with it. They're, they'll, they'll self-destruct. It's, it's horrific. So when you, when you do meet your twin flame, it's like this bubble romance. It's beautiful. It's divine. It's out of this body. It is not human experience. It's not a human experience. You have a Kundalini awakening, spiritual awakening. It's called a Heros Gamos, where literally it's the, um, the, the marriage of the divine souls, right? Where you do experience that, oh, God exists, like things exist. And it's very ethereal and mystical and spiritual. You see the past lives, the future lives, the present. You see the angelic light emanating. You see the person's soul. You feel safety, peace, um, the most unconditional love you could ever imagine that doesn't even exist on earth. It's like this spiritual experience and it's amazing. And then you kind of attach it to this individual. And this individual gets triggered because all of their trauma starts coming straight away, especially the divine masculine. What tends to happen is the divine masculine, um, basically, as soon as you, you have the interaction, their pain body gets activated. So all the trauma and the triggers that they haven't dealt with come to the surface like a torrent, like a volcano, like a tsunami. They're like a tsunami. We don't understand because we call them assholes. We say all of the things to them, but they are suffering. So they run because they're like, I don't feel good enough with this divine feminine all this stuff is coming she's bad news like i'm not feeling great about it and this when i say she or he it's it's not gender related it's to do with the energy so it doesn't matter so that causes the divine feminine to go into soul shock because for the divine feminine it's like i finally found you it's almost like um you're going lifetime after lifetime trying to find yourself and it's two it's like one soul in two bodies um like spider-man multi-universe and you kind of find the missing part of you in a way. And then you're like, oh my God, but they don't want to be with you. They have amnesia. I liken it to like, say for example, God forbid someone has a child who has a car accident and they're in hospital and you go over to them and you're like, I'm your mom. And they're like, who, who are you? And it is that experience. The divine masculine rejects and doesn't accept or um, recognize the divine feminine. And that could be due to past life stuff, too much trauma and um, karma, fear, triggers, pain body, all their lives the mind masculines have ran, 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 avoided, numbed, don't want to face it, don't want to be in the pain, stay in the ego. They're also part of the 3D matrix uh, construction. They're more of the lower chakra, so they're more embedded in just trying to be fitting in with money, power, sex, money, all that kind of stuff. So you come in and kind of shatter that. And um, so for them, they're like, I want to bolt, like, I don't want to deal with any of this. signs and the synchronicities and each other sending each other all the energy so they run and that causes the divine feminine to go into soul shock and once she goes into soul shock that's when the ego starts to die because all of her traumas come up and all of her triggers but she wants to face them so she basically starts to go within finally once she realizes she's a divine feminine and uh, the divine masculine runs but she deals with it and then heals all that with love self-love ascends and it, the journey happens to you. It's not like you're in control. Like you have to completely let go. Even the divine masculine thinks he's in control when he's running, but how far can you run? Eventually, once you surrender as a divine feminine, the divine masculine is forced by the divine to deal with his issues too. So what happens for the divine feminine is the divine masculine rejects her. He destroys her essentially. And then she, her ego deaths start happening and a dark night of soul and it's very rapid and some people do commit suicide unfortunately because it is like nothing ever before it's not like depression it's not it's just horrific whereas divine masculine he destroys himself by avoiding and running and then his whole life collapses on him and uh, you know however long it takes a year or two later when she, when the divine feminine surrendered the divine masculine totally collapses 
and the, all the signs, synchronicities they've been avoiding and shoving away, all the trauma comes right up to their face and they go through it really hard as well. So it's, it's almost like you are, you can't stop it. It's an unavoidable, stoppable experience. It's not nice. <laughs> yeah, I imagine because uh, this makes me think about different things. Like, for example, when we are uh, experiencing this twin flame and all these traumas and all these past life experiences start popping up, of course, it's going back to, to where we started, going back to, to actually experiencing the emotions that come with the whole journey. And the thing is, like, it's, it's scary to experience uh, fear, anxiety, to go through all the trauma that we, we've been avoiding for years. And then this person that comes as a twin flame says, like, here it is, red carpet for you to experience all these things that you've been avoiding all your life. And you're like, oh, my God. No, thank you. So, of course, most of the twin flames, I, I imagine it's, it's, it's quite a journey. It is. But you know what? Well, it's an amazing journey so in the beginning um when i used to read up about it they're like the twin flame journey is about ascension and i was like forget that i don't want no ascension i don't want to be no ascended anything i want the man <laughs> i want that hot man i want to marry that man i see in the future i i know we're having babies i want him i'm gonna do everything to get him i'm gonna stalk him i'm gonna phone him i'm gonna call him email him he don't listen and then <laughs> afterwards when you deal with it because they reject you constantly until because you're in your distortion controlling and and fearful avoid uh, and you know chasing whatever so then once you ascend and you come to a place of peace you're like oh damn life is good life is better than before because you first of all you look younger it's so crazy because you let go of all those uh, burdens and and traumas that you actually go 10 years younger you look better you're more attractive a lot of people are interested in your vibration your energy you're in surrender so all your manifestations all the money the abundance anything you want you ask it and it is you ask it and it is at work nothing triggers you no human being can actually bother you anymore because your twin flames destroyed all that and um your ego is very very balanced and 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 in, in, in like working with you so it's funny because anything you want in your life just comes to you. You're living in a total place of peace and bliss and harmony and you're doing your purpose, you're living life, you're helping people and that's where you want to get to. That's when the masculine fixes up and returns as well. But it is, in the end, it is fantastic. It is, when you get through it. Absolutely. I can completely resonate with it. Uh, going through my, my, my journey and different journeys that I've been walking through life, um, it's very interesting once you surrender into into what it is into into connecting to the source to your heart to 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 who you are that's when when in my in my case i experienced a, 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 a switch in my reality when i can actually start enjoying everything as it is how, how it is and it doesn't matter what it is because it is and that's it acceptance yeah people ask how do i surrender how do i forgive he did me wrong and it is like okay so basically your expectations of what you wanted caused you pain because no one has you know committed to you no one you know it's like you're not accepting the situation surrender is actually letting go or allowing but first you must accept before you let it go you must accept that right now my my twin flame doesn't want me right now my twin flame is stuck in the matrix in the ego and doing stupid stuff right now i need to you know just let it be and work on myself and when you surrender or allow or let go it's not not like giving up you just surrender it to god you surrender it to the divine to the universe and you just allow it to work out as it's meant to. And people ask me this. I mean, someone was asking me yesterday, oh, if I surrender or if I just accept it, doesn't mean I'm going to like never get them. I'm, I'm giving up. No. Twin flame is you, right? So I've got my right hand. I've got my left hand. Now, if I, uh, if I focus on them, oh, where's my left hand? Where's my left hand? I'm stressing for no reason. But if I just accept it, it's there. It's fine, right? And I just allow, it's always going to be there and it will always come back to me right it's just i'm pushing against an idea which is an illusion and it just causes more pain the expectations the the not um accepting the now the reality and in the now everything is purpose uh, and everything is beautiful in the now we are whole and complete in the now we go within the soul and we feel that we are connected to the divine in the now we realize that we are loved in the now we realize that we have purpose and we don't need anything or anyone because in the now we are already in union we're in union with everything and everyone and every single being 
and we are connected and when you feel that oneness and you allow all the things you want come and your manifestations come too because you are already complete yeah and you already have all that you already have it it's just the the illusion of the ego that thinks you're not thinks you're separate from everything separate from twin flames separate from your money separate from your desires separate from your passions no 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 that's this illusion a separation consciousness and exactly it's what we're talking about because sometimes we think that we went through the whole path and oh my twin my twin flame showed me this this that and then there's a very delicate veil between mm -hmm. the heart and the ego and sometimes it's very hard to, dif to to see the difference between both of them because you're so sure that it's your heart that it's your heart but surprise your ego came back so it's uh, it's it's very important to be very aware of, of where you're standing of how the present moment actually unfolds in such a natural and organic way and and and, and accept and surrender to it because we talk, sometimes as humans forget uh, we go back to our minds into the past of what if what if uh, only if I did that only if I surrendered before but in the end that's the past and we're living in something that doesn't exist anymore and then we plan so much things I'm gonna get him back I'm gonna do it like this I have to pay the house I have to work I'm surrendering and we put so many things in our mind for our future that we forget that all we have is right here right now and and once you actually get a hold of this consciousness of being here and now, the divine just unfolds. Yeah, and I was, I was, I wrote a few notes down. So it is a dance or an interplay between the ego and the mind, you know, the ego, the mind and the soul, um, the heart. There is a dance and an interplay and you always have to keep it in check. And when you're going in the future or the past or you're holding on to the emotions, you're in that ego space. But in the present, like you say, everything is. And it, it, with Twin Flame, it's very interesting because with the Divine Masculine, if you bring up the past, if you say, you did this, you were with her and you, you, you left me alone, they run, okay? And if you focus on the future, I want you to marry me now and what about kids? They run. So with the Twin Flame, you are forced to be in the present moment. And in that present moment, there is no uh, blame or shame or anxiety because you are in the now and you have to really balance the energy. Otherwise, it gets with twin flames, the frequency is so high that you end up just like um, repelling each other. So, yeah, definitely you have to keep your ego in check and stay in the present. You're forced to. It's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> a very strict um, training camp, I would say, the twin flame journey. It's like keeping you always in your vibration in the now. Absolutely. And, and uh, like, speaking about the ego, I mean, the ego is very important. I mean, let's not let's not t take for granted that the ego is something very important for the for the human interactions. Because, of course, the ego can take you to different situations that can that can take you out from your from from your evolution in, into into your heart. But at the same time, your ego can be your friend as well, because once you become your ego's friend, you can get out of situations because you can, because you want, because I want to go into 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 the deeper divine, you know. So it's very important to be aware as well of of, of that ego part, that it's you know not what? necessarily a bad thing what? if it becomes like your friend and you use it organic consciously, I mean. What I love by um, Daryl Anker, who channels Bashar, he always talks about the ego's purpose is just to anchor the soul in the 3D, apparently. The ego um, is meant to be that grounding place for your soul, so it can stay here. And apart from that, it doesn't have any other job. But we give it too much power by kind of like uh, focusing on the ego and staying in the mind. But yeah, the ego does give you personality, of course, and it does serve a purpose, but we give it too much purpose and we get we allow it to go wild. And that's why it cannot manage or control, because then it's like um, it's taking decisions or actions that are not meant for its uh, mechanism. Right. That's the higher mind, the higher self. The higher self is the intu intuition that is allowing you to take steps forwards. But when we're staying in the ego, we're kind of... Um, giving the ego some responsibility they cannot cannot do it's like giving a a toddler um you know a, a doctor's surgeon's knife and asking them to perform 
a surgery on someone it, it cannot do it because it's not the toddler is meant to just learn how to walk and talk and it, it, it's just that's its purpose so we give the ego a greater purpose than it deserves and that's what causes all the havoc in the world absolutely it's very important to keep it in check, to make it your friend, and not go above and, above and beyond giving it much more power than, than it deserves. Put it, put it where it belongs and always connect to the divine, to your heart. And, um, and of course, I would like to ask you another question. I mean, in, 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 in this twin flame journey, um, you said that you let go. But did you let go or did it come back? Or how, how is your, your twin flame journey right now? I, I, I'm curious. Oh, I dear. Think that it, might, it might be a very interesting question for, for the people here listening a little bit. I have to be very careful when I talk about my twin flame because it gets very triggered. And it is also sensitive. Um, you have to respect your twin flame. And uh, only when they're ready, there'll, be, there'll come a time when he will be with me in videos. He does a lot of social media. So we'll be doing a lot of stuff. We'll be power coupling the world, traveling and doing stuff. And then uh, we will have our babies and do stuff with that too. But um, for now, um, all I can say, I'll keep it general. I've had a very uh, tough, horrific twin flame journey. I don't tend to mention it much because I don't think there's any point in it. Um, the harder the journey, sometimes often it's like the harder the purpose, the bigger the purpose you have or the more karma you've got to heal. Um, let's just say um, I, I sometimes recommend, not always, but if it's, you know, I use, I work with a psychic and um, twin flame in union. And uh, she said to me once that, Manny, in all my 35 years of doing readings, I've never cried for someone before. And she cried, she's cried in my readings many times. So um, my twin flame journey is um, basically now at that stage where the divine feminine comes into union with herself surrenders allows so i'd be the divine feminine energy which is just like um protons and electrons it's just energy and then the divine masculine is now healing and going through their own stuff realizing oh shit i was a total whatever and i did this but also also that whole victim mode poor me my life i was treated bad uh, and the realization I'm a product of my behavior. I'm a product of my thoughts and my manifestations and I need to fix up. I need to come back correct. I need to heal. I have um, dismissed this person. I have ridiculed this person. I have rejected this person, denied this person, ran away from this person, did a lot of stupid stuff against this person. And I realized I was the fool. And now I must come correct. So that's where I'm at on the journey. Beautiful. Well, beautiful. When <laughs> it, it, for me, it's beautiful. Well, when consciousness comes in, then the journey starts going in a, in, in, in a beautiful path because now you're aware of things that you were not before. Now you can actually say like, okay, I have a choice of not doing things the way I was doing them and actually going to that healing, healing journey as well. Not only the twin flame journey, but the healing journey that uh, will bring you to what we were talking about, which is uh, the ascension of your soul. It is. And then, you know, some people say, how do I forgive that? How do I do this? How do I do that? Like, they did be so wrong. And I was, I was very angry. And I was also very, uh, I'm a Scorpio. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to take revenge. How can this happen to me? And it was the ego, right? But then you get to a place because they are you. You understand everything. You understand all their silliness and their rebellion. Because it's like, I'm rebellious too. I'm also a badass. And, um, it just then you just see it as like they when I first met my twin flame, I felt um, they were my soul sibling. That's how it felt, which is really strange and weird to say. But and I made videos about this, but it feels like familiarity. And it's like you and a twin, like twin baby, like you say, they're your sibling as a baby. And one of you throws something out of the pram or eats your sweet or, you know, does something. And you're annoyed for a little bit, but they're, your, they're you, they're your blood, they're everything. And it's funny. So you, then you get to a stage where you realize that, you know what, it was just the ego, it was just the 3D and it helped you. Their silliness tra allowed you to ascend. Like, oh my God, the gift. No other person can give you that gift apart from God, obviously, but they helped you to get out of your suffering and they liberated you. They, because they, they, twin flames, they're meant to balance you out, okay? So if you become too spiritual, they will go the other way. It's like a, it's like a seesaw, like that. So if you become too spiritual, they become very sexual. So then they will kind of like trigger you to get balanced. And you have to come in the middle in the zero point to balance the energy. So you kind of like constantly not wanting to go to any extremes. 
You know, you don't want to become an extreme in this world or that world or in ideologies or thoughts. Spiritual people can become very egotistical and you must meditate 20 hours a week and you must do yoga asanas and you must go on retreats and you must do this and then you're spiritual, then you are right. The rest of the world is wrong. The Twin Flame way is not to judge people or say this is right or wrong. It's to um, embrace and love everyone equally um, unconditionally and to see the truth in them and see the divine in them and I did talk about this um, in one of my lives that I went to a strip club recently which I would never ever go to my friend dragged me there and I had no idea I have never been paid or would I pay for anything like this but I learned that even God exists in strip clubs it was interesting the person on stage looked a spitting image of my twin flame and he was a yoga teacher and he was a stripper. And it was so interesting because he was only doing it to make money because he lost his studio. But a lot of spiritual people were judging him, you know, and people go on paths and go into areas because they, they're looking for love in all the wrong places or they are suffering. But it doesn't mean we should judge them or hate them or say they are wrong and our way is right. Because if you think about, um, I'm going to show you something if I can. If you think about God, for example, um, or the consciousness of God. Sorry, you're making a big noise. Say this is God, or this is a. I like to do a lot of metaphors and stories. Anyway, so I this is my it. light, sunlight, because we're in England. It's winter. Um, when it's in winter, I put it on. So this is sun, and we have a perspective as a spiritual person that this is how we get to to God. This is God. This is you know source. But people are coming from this angle and this angle and this angle, and everyone's coming from different angles. Three sixty. We must accept every perspective in order to understand God fully, to understand source fully, there's not just our way, it's not just our perspective. And I think that's where a lot of the spiritual people get it wrong, where we kind of like start thinking we are superior when we are not superior. But the, the divine masculine that's what that's where the ego of the spiritual person came comes come comes comes to shake him off. Exactly. That's where the divine masculine comes in place because usually they're very 3D. They they're like um they reject your, your spirituality, they will sexualize you, they dance. It, I did a video where I talked about they just come like clowns going, ah, 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 ah. it's almost like your like um twin sibling just kind of like shaking your world up. Oh, so this is what you think the world is, this is what you think life is, let me shake it. And then you're like, what? And then you see something more, and then you understand that your perspective was limiting you, and you were stuck in a story that was kind of keeping you stuck in your ego. So it's a beautiful Absolutely. journey when you start seeing it that way. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a blessing when consciousness arrives, and, and you can connect to that in a, in a different perspective, because sometimes the perspective... I love talking about perception because, I mean, it's the perception that it's given to us from, from our mother. And sometimes our parents, come, no, not sometimes, all the time, our parents come conditioned. So, of course, we 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 need to break through all the conditionments that, we, that we're giving and unlearn. Unlearn all the things that uh, don't align with our purpose, with our soul, with our heart, with the source. Uh, but for the human mind, sometimes breaking through the wall is a bit special journey huh well the twin flame will make sure you break through all those walls all the programs all the distortions all the fear all the matrix uh, mechanisms will be broken and that's liberation that's ascension that is enlightenment that is nirvana that is it when you are out of that construct that story that uh, box out of the box into the truth and the truth is infinite ever growing so the journey is never over it's always expanding so the twin flame uh, purpose is to 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 free you from that they come like a um you know like a, someone who, a jail guard like a prison guard to open you out of your prison and like whoop, and then off you go and <laughs> see the world look the world is bigger than the prison you make of yourself and we do the same for them too we do the same for them absolutely yeah, I like this metaphor about the jail because <laughs> uh, sometimes the biggest jail that we have because there's no jail, right? But our mind can become a jail. And if you're not in tune with your heart to open it up and realize that the jail doesn't exist, it's only right here, right now, that's all we have. So it's, 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 very, it's very beautiful to tune in into the consciousness, into the awareness of, of, of being, of the life. It's the 
have created prisons we make of ourselves. We create uh, incar incarceration, incarceration camps and we live on those camps or those islands, those prison islands. And we just think everything is true and we're attracting the similar people who think the same way or behave the same way. And we're saying, look, it's the truth. It's all around us. But that's because we're stuck in that mentality. And if we got out of that mentality and saw other islands, we will see that the opportunities are always there. You can just jump or, or, or go on a plane and go on another island and have some fun. Stop being on your judgmental ass and just have some fun. And the Divine Maskins also, they go through so many things of unworthiness, um, self-abandonment, rejection, and all these things. Again, prisons, prisons within their islands of how they are restricting themselves. When we are divine souls, we are infinite beings, we are unconditional love, we have supreme power given, by, given to us by the divine to be able to do whatever we want. But we need to just move out of our comfort zones and see, you know what, actually, just because they said that to me, the social programming that I wasn't good enough, or just because they don't believe that in themselves, that's not the truth for me. I can transcend. Absolutely. That's what ascension is. It's transcending those limitations to be free. Absolutely. And uh, there's a very interesting question that um, that Scorpio 17 posted here. And he asked, do you guys feel, feel the merging and the wantness? So how do you feel about this, yeah. this question? Because I have my, my, my opinion, but I'm very looking forward to, to see what you think. How you feel? Yeah, so I have made a few videos about soul merging and it does happen eventually on the Twin Flame journey. You start to look like each other uh, at times, maybe your eye colour changes. Uh, I certainly have sights that my Twin Flame has very chiseled jawline. My jawline starts to change, but also internally your personality, your traits, because you're going back to your um, divine blueprint, okay? So you are one soul blueprint with the same core values and the same core purpose. And my uh, part four in my series of Twin Flames that is launched today is about purpose. But yes, eventually you start having that soul merge and you start and that's when the forgiveness comes and the uh, understanding of your twin flame, why they behaved, their pathological, psychological ways of behaving when you start understanding it at a soul level. Um, but then the soul merge happens when their 5D self is also following you around um, you'll wake up and they'll be sleeping next to you in the bed or you'll be talking here and they'll be standing here and you see your children, your spirit babies. Very fascinating, very interesting, very weird. But um, the soul merge is that uh, part of you when you have finally started to transcend the ego and you are starting to become into unity consciousness, into oneness. And that is with them. That's when you're balancing. So soul merge, again, like I've just mentioned, it's the seesaw, right? So if you go too spiritual, they become too 3D. If you become too celibate, they will try to sexualize you because you have to come to a place in the middle. That's the zero point. That's the now. That's the present. That's the, the non-judgment. That's the equanimous middle path. The Buddha talked about the middle path, being in the, don't being, not being too much one way, not being too much the other way. Enlightenment is in the middle where you're not actually, with Twin Flames, there's three points, right? So you've got the, the one polarity, the other polarity, then the middle. And that's where God exists, actually. So you're coming back to the Godhead, the, the center, which is, um, accepting all that is that you talked about before accepting the now -ness. that is the soul merge where you are able to bridge each other because one twin flames here the other twin flames there but you have to bridge and meet in the heart center and the heart center is unconditional love in the now so yeah that's the soul merge that brings me to a question because uh right now we're talking about the twin flame journey but for people who believe that are not in the twin flame journey that are just in their own healing their own space of going into their into their healing into their own journey regardless of yeah. where the twin flame journey um is at at the moment how how do you believe that this affects like uh, the, the 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 balance the ascension do you think that twin flame is one of the most important parts of the journey or or it's not because maybe people are questioning right now like is it important that i did not find my twin flame am i ready am i not ready and all these questions that might pop up uh good qu um, question and i think if you haven't met your twin flame good on you i don't wish twin flame on even my worst enemy but um some different people say different things right but it all comes back to the same thing we've got to love ourselves we've got to be in a place of divine um, neutrality, divine self, so that we can live our divine purpose on earth, right? And be happy. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to get what they want. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to get rich. Everyone wants to have lover. Everyone wants to do... And most people want the same things, okay? And they think in getting those things, they're going to be happy. But you, once you go within, you realize you're happy anyway. 
But twin flames are, like some people say, they're the, the, the highest form of unconditional love on the earth. And then also some people say that um, they are actually spearheading society. So I'm going to show you a little diagram because I love to show little things. So you can see like a triangle there. So some people say like the twin flames are at the, at the precipice at the top, right? So they are basically breaking all the paradigms, healing, doing all the ego deaths, getting rid of all the programming. And underneath that, they ha they'll have a whole soul family of uh, people that are connected to them. So once they break the chains, that affects all the different souls underneath. So if you think about it, like say, for example, you've got a marathon runner, you've got someone doing like a sprint, yeah, Olympics or whatever, they're doing the running. If the person last year did 10 seconds, but this year someone did 9.8 seconds, they push the bar forwards. Then the rest of humanity thinks, you know what, I could do more. It was never thought of before that someone could do 9.8 seconds. But then the following year, someone does 9.7 seconds. Like you can constantly beat by, by being a role model and showing, look, I've done it. I've done it. So with Twin Flames, they are doing it. They are breaking those chains of suffering, of imprisonment on Earth. If you believe in like the dark forces and the Illuminati or whatever taking over the Earth, they are kind of like breaking those bondages that humanity has been stuck on Earth for thousands and thousands of years. But forget about Twin Flames. If you're not a Twin Flame, it's okay. Because at the end of the day, a lot of us are suffering, are stuck in our ego, stuck in illusion, stuck in fear, or we are surrounded by people who are doing the same. And then we're blaming them or feeling bad about that or not feeling good. Um, it is a projection. Everything is a mirror. Twin flame is a divine mirror. It amplifies even the smallest speck to the millionth degree to scare you out of that fear, to, to, to break you out of that fear, not to scare you. But with regular people, everyone is mirroring where we're at. So if someone is being angry, maybe they're somewhere inside. That's why working with your inner child and loving that part of yourself I have done many techniques from the time when I was very small to now, but loving your inner child, going within to that heart space, connecting with your inner child, feeling, hearing, seeing, you know, sensing your inner child and, and making a, a connection, a relationship, asking your inner child, what do you need? What do you want? Checking in on them, loving them, healing them and allowing them to feel good is the way in which we're going to be able to bring um, change on earth. So yeah, you change yourself, the world changes. So everyone, I think, will benefit from the from loving themselves and from allowing and trusting the universe. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I completely resonate with everything you say, and um, and I would like to add like that connection with the inner child, the connection with the heart, that connection with the surrender to the here and now. It it regardless of the twin flame journey or not, it, it, make, it will make you wonders because regardless of all the things that you want to manifest and all that, things that you have in your heart will, will start unfolding once you align to your inner child, to your feminine, to your masculine, to your heart, to the divine. And, and it's beautiful to, to see everything unfolding. It's true. And not everyone's a twin flame. A lot of people think they're twin flames. They're not. They, <laughs> There's a lot of they are karmic, karmic, flame, karmic um relationships i guess yes and then uh, limerence which is like obsession and then some are high level soulmates because the high the high level soulmate they won't trigger you to that extent and they will stick around a twin flame will trigger and run um, a twin flame journey you know you're on that because you're um having a spiritual awakening and kundalini and you are ascending you will get into abundance and you cannot hate them <laughs> you can't hate them for long but we are all important and we all have a purpose in this mechanism on earth right some people are meant to be fighting in the trenches some people are meant to be protesting or going to war some people are meant to be holding the vibration our beasts and animals on the planet are staying in equilibrium and allowing the vibration of the earth to kind of balance out because they're staying in the now and some of us um, who are into spiritual work are meant to be elevating the consciousness so that we are staying in the vibration of where we want to go where we want to manifest so in that way each and every one of us has a role in the um in the in the system in the in the ecosystem of the planet right um and yeah i we should never be like oh twin flames who cares it's just the label and at the end of the day i feel like everyone wants to you know be happy and everyone wants to you know get what they want in life and feel peaceful and feel good and by connecting with that inner power your divinity you can get there so yeah beautiful absolutely to wrap up a little bit all these 
intense and very important uh, and valuable information. What would be the tip that you will give uh, people right here, right now, to try to live from the soul? So I would say, again, what I said before, working with your inner child is one of the most transformational things you can do. Just going within your heart space, closing your eyes every day if you can, connecting a couple of times a day if you can, for as long as you can. Connect with your inner child and love your inner child. Listen to your inner child and build a good relationship with your inner child. And if you believe in the divine, if you believe in God or any, any other sort of higher supreme force, invite that into your heart space to provide that safety and love that you didn't get. Because a lot of us forget when we're small kids, no one teaches us this. If you need anything, God is within you, right? God is your mother. God is your father. God is your lover. God is your sister. God is your brother. God is your teacher. God is your boss. God is your client. God works through everyone. The, the image of God, the divinity, seeing through the eyes of soul, seeing everyone through that image. Is that the truth? Yes. So you can invite that divinity within yourself to provide that love and protection and safety you didn't receive that you didn't receive from your parents because they were distorted you didn't receive from your lover because they were traumatized you didn't receive from blah 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 because you were looking outside for love in all the wrong places forgetting that love exists within <laughs> we have everything we need and it's right here right now inside of ourselves we just have to plug in indeed like i did with the yoga mats but yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very simple thing you know a yoga mat but it could be anything sometimes people think that meditating takes a lot of knowledge meditating takes a lot of time i have to i have to and we connect to these feelings of i have to i need to i and in the end of meditation it's as simple as just breathing in out here now and it helps reboot the nervous system in, in a couple seconds because it's as simple as that. You can do it as many times as you, you need. And you can dance, you can go for a run, you can laugh with your friends. Absolutely. You can watch a comedy show. There, there's so many ways in which to get into alignment. You know, getting into alignment is getting into your flow, what makes you feel good. You might have an amazing Michelin star meal and feel in alignment. And then you just stay in that, have those appreciative thoughts as you're walking down the street, appreciate your neighbors or the trees or your dog, your cat, that's alignment. So you're essentially getting into alignment and staying there as often as you can. Absolutely. And it's as simple as finding what makes your heart smile. Yes. Remembering. Yes, exactly. What makes you feel joyful. And it's everything for every single human being. Sometimes we, we see other people being in, in their own alignment and we don't understand it. But it doesn't matter. Don't judge. Just see what makes you feel good. And absolutely, that's, that, that's the only way to go. Remember what makes your heart dance. We're all unique and i love that point we're all unique and we're gonna have different ways of appreciating and and uh, experiencing that alignment right and even with your partner or your friends and family it's okay if they do it differently it's because okay. if we were all the same it would be boring not everyone dances the same rhythm of the heart yeah that's it all the same way yeah wonderful thank you so much no thank you for accepting this invitation for me it has been a wonderful moment being here in presence in your presence in divine presence of all these beautiful people that have been accompanying us i want to thank you i want to thank every single soul that has been in 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 this live moment in this presence yeah thank you everyone watching um it's, it's almost like the asking of the audience brings up across the the manifestation of the the things we say like they just extract it out from our souls so we're all part of this we're all together no none of us are alone absolutely everything that uh that has been said maybe we didn't bring it up literally but it, I, I assure you that it touched things that brought a lot of a lot of energy out divine energy and i'm very grateful I'm grateful for each one of you. I'm grateful for you accepting this invitation for myself, divine. I love you all. If nobody told you today, I love you. We love you. You are loved. And thank you. Have a great day.